to have to do with four coordinates. <laughs> much easier to do at now that you know the basic trigonometry. Um, usually when we have a graph, an XY graph, you can plot points on that graph, have coordinates X and Y. This is called, called Cartesian coordinates. Um, sometimes it's called a Cartesian plane, but it's just a plane. Uh, there are alternative ways to describe a point. There's actually many, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna look at what are called polar coordinates. Uh, when you find the polar coordinates, is you draw a line from the origin to your point. And that gives you an angle and a distance. I'll call R. R as in radius. different way to describe this point is the coordinates are theta, the polar coordinates. Um, there are some things that are a little different about polar coordinates uh, from Cartesian coordinates. Uh, the most prominent one is that they are not unique. Uh, that is, if I had a point zero, in other words, distance three from the origin and angle zero, that would be pretty much the same as three two pi to pi radius. And in fact, there would be many ways to describe each point. Notice that we just have a, a right triangle here. And we can see right away that um, x over r is cosine theta. So x is just r times the cosine theta. And similarly, y is r sine theta. So it's fairly easy to go from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. Um, going in the other direction is a little trickier. Um, well, let's all hold off. Let's do an example here. <coughs> I want to convert 4, comma, 2 pi over 3. 
That's uh, an angle here at 2 pi over 3, distance to 4. So uh, let's go ahead and use the form of this formula. X equals 4 cosine 2 pi over 3. And y equals 4 sine 2 pi over 3. So my reference angle for 2 pi over 3 is, of course, just pi over 3. The cosine of 2 pi over 3 is a half, so this is just 4 times a half. And this is square root of 3 <coughs> over 2 times 4. Uh, but the cosine in the second quadrant is <coughs> negative. So this is going to be negative. So we're going to get negative 2 and 2 square root of 3. So the polar coordinates are, therefore, minus 2, 2 square root of 3. So that's how you convert from polar coordinates to uh, Cartesian. Um, converting, as I said, in the other direction is a little trickier. Uh, however, um, it's pretty easy to figure out what r is. You just recall the Pythagorean theorem. You can see right away that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So r is just going to be square root of x squared plus y squared. You might also notice that uh, opposite over the adjacent, that's the tangent. So theta is going to be inverse tangent of y over x. But this is where it gets a little tricky, because uh, the inverse tangent function is uh, a little ambiguous about what we've got here. We know that. Uh, the tangent can be positive in the first and third quadrant and negative in the second and fourth. But more to the point, um, we look at the coordinates. Uh, we're going to be positive, positive in the first quadrant, negative, negative in the second, negative, positive in the, negative, negative in the third, negative, positive in the second, and in the fourth quadrant over here, written over, it's going to be positive negative. So merely by looking at the, the SIGN sign of these coordinates, we can determine uh, which quadrant it's going to be in. Um, a little side note, if anybody's a computer science person here, uh, you'll find that well, most, most computer languages will have uh, inverse tangent or arctan function. Say arctan of x, theta, this, right? But they often will have a second function which deals with this problem here. Uh, I've seen it called arctan 2 where you give it the x and the y coordinates. And now uh, it, it's going to get the SIGN sign correct uh, for you. Uh, at least it's going to put it within uh, the first 2 pi uh, angle. OK. Uh, let's do an example. Cartesian coordinates two minus two. Okay, uh, my r is going to be square root of 
2 squared plus minus 2 squared can be 2 square root 2. And theta is going to be the arctan of minus 1. Which, you know, normally that would be a pile of 4. No, it wouldn't. That would be 3 pi over 4. But we look here and we see, well, that's in the second quadrant. We really want to be in the fourth quadrant, <clears throat> plus or minus. So really, what we want is 3, three pi over 4 plus pi, which is going to be 7 pi over 4. So again, the equivalent here is 2 square root of 2, 7 pi over 4. And those are my polar coordinates. Okay, um, there are a lot of things we could do with polar coordinates that we're not going to do. Uh, but uh, I, I want to point out that uh, polar coordinates are fun, especially if you, you want to use your creativity a little, you want to explore. Um, here I'm using, uh, I'm using the Mac program grapher in the polar mode. Um, if you have a TI-83, you go into your mode list, you'll see that one of the options for uh, graphs is the POL mode. And you can put a polar equation in and uh, uh, graph it. Um, the first graph here is just R equals 3. Uh, so you might expect that's just very simply, it's a circle. Radius 3. It's rather simple. Um, let's take a look at the uh, r equals some number times the cosine, in this case 3. Well, that's interesting. It's also a circle. All right. Um, what if I were to add something to the circle, add something to the equation? Oh, so now we're now we're now we're looking at something a little more complicated here. Uh, this shape here uh, is kind of you know, it's kind of like this. It's called a cartoid. because it looks a little like a heart. Um, there are other things you could do. Here's r equals theta. This is going to be a spiral. This is a exponential spiral, it's known as. Um, and then you can do other fun stuff. You can do like kind of like a clover leaf here. In the, Put as many leaves as you wish. Yeah. That's a little more pleasant. Airplane engine, airplane uh, uh, propeller. Um, and here, remember something called a spirograph. Anyone ever get a spirograph for Christmas? It's a kind of a toy with gears that you can make drawings like this. So, so anyway, um, polar coordinates, polar equations are fun. You can do stuff with them. Uh, we're, we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to move on. Uh, but uh, we went over this form for a, a reason. Um, the next thing we're going to look at 
is we're going to use polar coordinates to examine uh, a slightly different plane. Instead of the XY Cartesian plane, we're going to look at the complex plane. Uh, you recall the complex plane instead of X and Y. The axes are the real numbers and the imaginary numbers. So uh, normally the coordinates of a point on this plane would be, let's call it A and B, uh, which is equivalent to the complex number A plus BI. Um, Something that I don't, I know we, we, we covered this to some degree when we were doing complex numbers, but if I have a complex number, I'm going to use z to refer to that instead of x and y meaning real numbers, or a and b meaning real numbers. Uh, we have something called the complex conjugate, which I'm going to write as z asterisk. Uh, that would be A minus BI. And uh, the complex conjugate has this nice feature that if I multiply uh, a complex number times its complex conjugate, well, I'm going to get A plus BI times A minus BI. And if I FOIL this, I'm going to get A squared plus B squared. Where that's going to come in handy is I'm, I'm going to define something called the modulus of z, which is not z times z star, it's the square root of z times z star. So in the case of this point, a plus bi is going to be square root of a squared plus b squared. This is some basic complex number of terminology. All right, I'm getting back to my, my graph here. Getting back to the graph. Uh, if I now draw uh, a line from the origin to this point, Well, the sides of this triangle are A and B, so uh, the length of this, uh, this line uh, that we, we call the radius, or again call it the modulus, is now the square root of A squared plus B squared. Again, I, I have an angle theta here. So uh, I want to write my complex number here in terms of this radius. I'm going to say z is equal to r times a over r plus b over i, b over r i. Uh, this is clearly the same because I just took out a factor of r. Now if I look at this diagram here, a over r is just what? The cosine of theta. And b over r is the sine of theta. So I can rewrite z here, my a plus bi, as r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm using two different coordinate systems to describe the same number. Uh, this version, we'll 
called a polar, polar version of a complex number. Before we go into why this is just such a great idea, uh, let's just see how we can take an actual, uh, actual complex number and put it into polar form. So let me start with z equals 3 plus 4i. So my modulus here, or my r, can't be both, is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. If you know your 3, 4, 5 right triangles, you know this is becomes 5. So I have z equal to 5 times 3 fifths plus 4 fifths i. But now as in before, as with going to polar coordinates, I know that my theta is going to be the arc sine of y over x here, or b over a, 4 fifths over 3 fifths, or arc sine, not arc sine, arc tangent, excuse me. Arc tan of 4 over 3, which if I plug into my calculator, I get about 0.927 radians. So that tells me that z is 5 times the cosine of 0.927 plus i sine of 0.927. All right, that took a little work. Um, if, I, if I wanted to go backwards, if I wanted to go back to 3 plus 4i, that's a lot simpler, obviously. I just multiply 5 times the cosine of 0.97, 0.97, and 5 times i sine of 0.927. That will give me back the, uh, the Cartesian coordinate version of complex number. Um, all right. Uh, this seems like a lot of work, kind of shifting our perspective, polar, polar coordinates. Why go through all this trouble? Uh, this is a really, it's a really fantastic idea. Uh, it's a really great way to look at complex numbers because you, you, you start to see something about them that isn't apparent otherwise. Uh, and then we're going to get to that. Uh, just a minute here. Um, let me start by showing you what happens when I multiply two complex numbers using using this format. So Normally I have, say, z1 equals a1 plus bi, b1i, and z2 equals a2 plus b2i. And, you know, to multiply those together, we just, we just foil the, the values. Uh, but let's look at it from the point of view of the polar version. Uh, let's let z1 equal r1 cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1, and z2 equal r2 cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. And we want to look at z1 times z2. Okay, well, we can just multiply r1 and r2 together, right? Those are R1 and R2 are real numbers, so R1, R2 is a real number. 
number. And now we have to multiply uh, cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 times cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. We're going to have to FOIL this. So let's, let's do that. Uh, first thing we're going to get is, first is cosine theta 1 cosine theta 2. That's the first. Let's multiply the lasts now. i sine theta 1 times i sine theta 2. i squared is minus 1, right? So this is just minus sine theta 1 sine theta 2, right? Uh, now we have to do the inner and the outer, right? So that's cosine theta 1 sine theta 2 times i, and i times uh, sine theta 1 cosine theta 2. Okay. Now we have to like think for a second. This looks, these look very familiar, especially if I take the i outside of this, right? Cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2 minus sine theta 1, sine theta 2. It's like cosine x, cosine y minus sine x, sine y. This is just cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2. What about cosine theta 1, sine theta 2, sine theta 1, plus something? It's like sine x, cos cosine x, sine y, plus cosine y, sine x. This is just sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. <coughs> wow. There's a lot here to kind of take apart here. Um, we multiply two uh, complex numbers in polar form, and the radius or the modula, modulus of the result is just the product of the moduli. Uh, when we look at the angles, when we multiply two complex numbers, what happens? Adding, we're just adding the angles. Let's say I have uh, some point at 1 over here, and this is, you know, let's say, 30 degrees, and uh, another point 2 at 45 degrees. Well, I just have to add the angles, right? There's an angle of say 75 degrees, and what's the, what's the size? It's just going to be 1 times 2. That's quite, quite astonishing. Uh, we're multiplying two things, but we end up adding instead. Does that sound familiar? When do we when we want to multiply things, but we end up just adding. Well, yeah, you know, lots of add and we end up multiplying. Right? But the inverse, the, the exponents, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, there, there's going to be a connection here, but not, not quite yet. Okay, so uh, let's write this down. Uh, um, I guess I want to write, uh, write down this formula. <coughs> R1 
cosine theta 1 plus i sine make this clearly it's i you say one thing my hand does another i sine theta 1 times r2 cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2 that's that is r1 r2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus i sine theta 1 plus theta 2 equals uh, it's a very similar formula that you could come up with in the same way, uh, which is if I want to divide, I want to find out what z1 divided by c2 is. That's just going to be r1 divided by r2 times the cosine of theta1 minus theta2 plus i sine of theta1 minus theta2. In other words, when we're multiplying the numbers, we add the angles, and when we divide, we're just going to subtract. Um, yeah, let's, let's do an example of that. So, Z1 multiplication here, cosine of phi over 4, I sine of phi over 4, and z2 is 5 times cosine of phi over 3 plus i sine of phi over 3. So my z1 times z2 is going to be 2 times 5 is 10, and cosine of phi over 4 plus phi over 3 plus i sine of pi over 4 plus pi over 3. Let's see, pi over 4 plus pi over 3, that's what? That's 3 pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12 is 7 pi over 12. All right, so these are just uh, cosine of 7 pi over 12 plus pi sine of 7 pi over 12. All right, that's, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good start. Um, we're going to take it uh, another step. We did something like this when we were looking at the... Uh, we were looking at the uh, double angle formula. Uh, Let's say I have uh, some complex number r cosine theta plus i sine theta. And I want to know what z squared is. Well, that's easy now, right? That's just r squared times cosine of 2 theta plus, you know, theta plus theta is 2 theta plus i sine of 2 theta. That looks pretty good. But I could, I could multiply this by z again, right? I get z cubed equals r cubed times cosine 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. That's, that's rather nice. I mean, we can just keep going. You can see we have a formula here. Z to the n equals to the n times cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. Okay, now that, that's starting to, to get to where it could be really useful. Let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, here's a problem. Z is one half plus one half i. 
I want to find out what z to the tenth is. Okay. Uh, first thing I have to do for this to work is to put it into polar form. I mean, I, I, I could just keep multiplying, right? I, I can do that, but that's a lot of work. But uh, let's put it into polar form. So the modulus is the square root of 1 half squared plus 1 half squared. It's 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is a half, so it's the square root of a half or 1 over the square root of 2. All right, let's rewrite z as 1 over the square root of 2 times 1 over the square root of 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2 pi. Well, now we want the arctangent of y over x. That's 1. Is that right? Yeah. So the arctan of, uh, of 1 is pi over 4. And since it's in the first quadrant, we know we've got the SIGNs right. Okay, so this is just uh, z equals 1 over the square root of 2 times cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. That was, that was the heavy lifting on this problem. The rest of it's going to be really easy. Z to the tenth is just going to be 1 over the square root of 2 to the tenth times the cosine of 10 pi over 4 plus i sine of 10 pi over 4. All right? Square root of 2 to the tenth, that's 1 over the square root of 2 to the tenth, that's 1 half to the fifth. So this is 1 over 32. Uh, cosine 10 pi over 4, that's 5 pi over 2. Uh, 5 pi over 2 is equal to 2 pi plus pi over 2, right? And since it's periodic, you just need to know the cosine of pi over 2. What's the cosine of pi over 2? Sine of pi over 2. Yes? Zero. Zero plus i times the sine of pi over 2 to the sine of pi over 2. One. One, right? So this is just i over 32. I think I did this wrong in the last class. I think I forgot it was one over. Uh, wow. You just raise something to the tenth power without really too much, too much effort. It seems really useful. Right. Um, so I've got this nice formula here. Uh, but so far, the way I've described it, it, it only works or integers. So I'm, I'm going to do a little, do a little hand waving here. Um, I'm going to take this expression, r to the one over n, where n is an integer. Cosine theta over n plus i sine theta over n. Whatever that is, right? And I'm going to raise this to the nth power. Well, my formula tells me how to do that. That's just r to the 1 over n to the n. That's r. And 
and what do I do here? Cosine theta over n times n, that's just cosine theta plus i sine theta. Well, now I want to kind of undo that. I want to raise both sides to the 1 over n. So taking this over here, I now have r cosine theta plus i sine theta. to the 1 over n, that's just equal to r to the 1 over n cosine theta over n plus i sine theta over n. So that is to say this formula works whether n is an integer or a fraction. nice to do is to extend that just one more step. It's true for fractions. Can I make it true for all real numbers? Um, that would take more work than I want to do today. Uh, but you can, you can take my word for it. <laughs> this is true for any n member of the reals. Uh, this is a really important and useful formula. It's so important and useful, it has a name. This is called Wavre's theorem. Uh, what I really like about it is that whereas the previous example I gave, I raised something to the tenth. We already had a way to do that, but uh, what if we ask a question like, what is minus 1 to the 1 6th? Or more important, if x to the 6th equals minus 1, what is x? Uh, the difference being, here I'm just asking for a number, but x to the 6 equals minus 1, or like x to the 6 plus 1 equals 0. Uh, that's a 6 degree equation, so how many roots is it going to have? It's going to have 6 roots. Now, finding those roots, we don't really know how to do, right? We don't think we know how to do until now. So let's look at how we would do this. Right? Uh, first, let's uh, write z as minus 1 plus 0 i. So its modulus is going to be 1. The square root of minus 1 squared plus 0 squared is 1. And, okay, we want cosine of some angle, hmm. cosine of what is minus 1? Here's the cosine minus 1. Yes? Pi. Pi, yeah. Unfortunately, the sine of pi is zero. Okay. So we want z to the one. Well, no. before I before I do this, I, I want to rewrite this a little. Uh, we don't need the one really. This is cosine of pi plus two pi n plus i sine of pi plus 2 pi m. I, I can 
can do that because sines and cosines are two pi periodic, right? I'm going to need this uh, component in a minute. So uh, z to the 1 6 is going to be cosine of pi plus 2 pi n over 6 plus i sine of pi plus 2 pi n over 6. All right. Uh, let's, let's list some of those. So if n is 0, we get cosine of pi over 6 plus i sine of pi over 6. We add 2 pi n, we make n 1, that's 3 pi over 6, that's going to be cosine of 3 pi over 6, or pi over 2. Um, we add at n equals 2, that's going to be <coughs> pi pi over 6. And 3 is going to be 7 pi over 6. 9 pi over 6. Oh, 9 pi over 6, that's 3 pi over 2. And finally, we'll get 11 pi over 6. Now, why can I stop there? Well, if I add one more uh, n, I'm going to get 13 pi over 6. But that's just pi over 6, right? It's going to go around in a loop. OK. Uh, Let's, let's start figuring out the easy ones here. Uh, cosine of pi over 2 is what? Uh, cosine of pi over 2. Zero? Zero, yeah. Cosine of pi over 2 is 1, so this is i. Huh. So i to the 6 is minus 1. OK, good. Right. Uh, this one looks pretty easy, too. 3 pi over 2. So the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is? That's zero. It's 0. Now, the sine is minus 1, so it's minus i. OK. Uh, let's look at pi over 6. Um, OK, so the cosine of pi over 6 is, this piece here is square root of 3 over 2, and the sine is a half. Oh, I wrote that in the wrong place. Up there. Uh, but if you look at these other values, they all have the same reference value. Reference angle, right? All these have the reference angle pi over 6. So that tells me they're only going to differ here. That's plus and minus. So really all I have to do is figure out what, what quadrant they're in. This is in the second quadrant. It's negative square root of 3 over 2 plus i over 2. This is in the third quadrant, so they're both negative. And then this is in the fourth quadrant, right? So that's going to be square root of 3 over 2 minus i over 2. <clears throat> I mean, to me, that's just kind of amazing, right? I mean, here's this operation. I don't even know how to do it. Find the square root or the cube root of a complex number. And this formula here, it gives me a way to do it. I think that's just kind of amazing. Uh, it's also it's also 
Another thing about this is kind of neat. So if you look at the complex plane and you look at the unit circle, well, all these points on here, they all have the same modulus. They're all one, right? So whenever you multiply two things on this circle, you get something else on the circle, right? All you really have to do to figure out what your new number is is add, add the angle. Um, all right, I think that's it for today. Um, something to keep in mind, something to keep in mind is that that nagging thing about we're adding something and we're multiplying. Let's see where that goes on the right end. Uh,